to you. First of all, you assault his stepfather. Boy, I will assault. tell you that I told his stepfather, whoever the hell he is, to go up there and tell his mother to get down here right away. I also radioed the man on the beat to go up and tell her the situation. Yeah, but whoa, 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 what about all this assault business? Now, Dennis, you should know that man by now. We're not that talking about him. if you know anything about, about him, Melville. We're talking about the way you're treating the boy. I don't know what kind of third degree visions you've been having, Dennis, but the boy and I started off by saying what a nice man you were. Started off? That's right, since then it has deteriorated. Ah! tried to bolt. He knows something, and I nearly had it out of him when he tried to bolt. He never got nothing out of me. I don't know nothing. He just tried to break my hey, piece hey, now. Melville, Melville. Look, Phil, you go and have your tea, huh? Phil! Tea! Look, Skipper, just give me five more minutes for this. Look, I ain't talking to you, Neil, a pig. I ain't got nothing to say, and I don't know nothing. And if you want to keep me here any longer, you have to charge me something. I know that I'm bloody right, I do and all. It's right you know, Inspector. Look, I can keep you here as long as I like. And I can do a better job on you than Constable Fell did. <laughs> but he'll be back. So piss off now, the two of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Fred. Relax. We all hit the wire sometimes, you know. Hey! Walcott! Melville! Melville! That fool earned your reprieve, and that's all it is. A reprieve. You know what I know, and from now on you get no peace from me, all right? Fool. You call your brother officer a fool. Piss off, Dennis. Remember, Melville. Why don't you go back where you come from and leave English people alone? Do this? Sure, man. Man, handle the wicked, all right. I'm not wicked enough right now, man. Remember, Zion will come. Brethren is gonna take it all. And I see it true. In view of the aggravated nature of this offence and the previous deplorable record of the defendant, this court would welcome the opportunity to pronounce the maximum sentence prescribed by law. However, certain circumstances connected with the actual arrest of the defendant force the court to temper its judgment. I shouldn't let it get to you, son. If it takes the great British public 20 years to get used to the idea of black policemen, it will take the judges 50. I wasn't proud of the case. Ah, oh, just thought I'd wait for you. Want to lift back to division? Sure, thanks. See you later, Charlie. Yeah, take care, son. Here we are. See you later, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I dragged on a bit. Oh, that's all right. Keeps me out of the pub for a few minutes. Bob <laughs> Walcott, there's a message for you from Inspector Berry. 
Well, let's have it for We're a bit busy. What do you want you to go out and see him? Immediately you come in. What's it about? Well, wouldn't you better run along and find out? Well, as he said, it's better we're busy. No, 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 no. You just trot along, Winston. I think I could manage without you for just a few minutes. One week. That's all the time it's taken you, Winston. Just one week. Do you realize what this is? Some kind of complaint by the look of it. That's right. Well, uh, they've been made against me before, Inspector. The world didn't come to an end. A short temper is not a virtue in a police officer, Wolcott. I don't expect to inherit the earth. Now, what about the complaints? Complaints, Constable. Two formal complaints. One for assaulting a Mr. Garfield Prince, and the other filed by Mr. Prince, uh, Mrs. Groves and Dennis St. George, concerning the methods that you used to interrogate the juvenile, Melville Groves. Any complaints made against uh, PC Fell? No, why should there be? Lou, you told me your first week here that you weren't a community worker, and I accept that. I mean, it'd be too much to expect a man that's reached your position to be anything like that. But I did expect a certain sort of sensitivity towards the feelings of your own community. My sensitivity to my community you won't know a damn thing about, you understand? And you won't find it in any one of those bits of candy floss on your bookshelf. Now, what's a complaint? Strictly formal procedure. I thought I might be doing you a favour speaking to you before going to Mr Cosgrave. I can see that you don't want any favours from a man that you regard as incompetent to do his job. Look, uh, nothing personal, OK? Sorry. I always thought it was a stupid job anyway. Sorry, man. Come on. Listen, action man. You ain't been round long enough to give me stage directions. Yeah. You say one word out of order to me, and I'll make a show out of you the boys will be buying drinks on for the next six months. <laughs> your write-ups are going to your head, sir. My write-ups don't even scratch the surface. Besides, I wouldn't need them to deal with you, son. I hear the great Terry Rowe can't even keep the local niggers in line. I'll manage. I'm going to nail you and the bocker. It's going to look good. It's going to look good in the records, the papers, and the bloody sociology paperbacks. The bocker? Give over. You and the bocker have done four payrolls in the last six months. He's tailoring the jobs you're laundering. Now, the smart money would tell me to get to you through him. And I can work it that way. Don't think I can't. But I reckon I can stitch him up and the peasants through you. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I told you! Now, don't punch about with me, Terry. Samson security. Time, place, and all the doings. What's this in? Oh, God. That's a bit silly, isn't it? Chase it! 
chase the ball. You're not all Viv Richards and Joel Garners yet, you know. Yeah? Well, you never could get me out. You don't mind if I roll him over, do you? I guess I'll just have to clean ball you, boy. It's a team game, brother. What does he know, Dennis? About what? You better not be an ass, Dennis. And you can forget about your complaints. I'm not going to allow that boy to withhold information. I can't help you. <laughs> what are you doing for these kids, Dennis? You're letting them get away with all kinds of shit. Whatever I'm doing, I can't do it if everybody around here thinks I'm your private playback machine. We got different jobs. There's been a death, Dennis. You're damn right there's been a death. You know how many of these youth dying every day? No, man, I am trying to save lives. You're just working out somebody else's revenge. Bullshit! Lot of lads. You pig! You pig! You pig! Okay, um, could you give him a message for me, please? Right. Tell him that Melinda Marin called. Hi. And that, um, I'll bring him back. Okay, thank you. Bye. The little cut is gonna drive me crazy. Yeah, well, keep at it. I think you're cracking something here, really. I know, things seem to happen around this guy. Mm, so I believe. I'd like to meet him sometime. Mm, Jeremy, you and me both. No, man, it's your problem. I have to keep some kind of faith with these youth. Otherwise. Otherwise what? Otherwise, they graduate straight from my club to the Thousand Islands. Thousand Islands? Yeah. What, that disco by the junction? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some disco. Oh, man, look, I really don't believe this. Not only do you want me to grasp for you, you want me to write you a guidebook. Well, you want to find out about the Thousand Islands, you go there and ask. That rough, eh? <laughs> OK, listen. I already have youth doing heroin in the shit house. Now, down there, they sell dope, they sell sisters, and they don't ask how you're doing with your O-level revision. So you want to see the competition, you go there and check it out. Well, I guess I better do that. Cynthia, I hope you're well. Oh, yes, I'm fine, thank you. Mrs. Walcott? Yes, girl, what is it? Oh, it's just that I... I, I hope Winston isn't... Uh, well, I hope he isn't letting 
Those complaints, I can't... I'm sure he isn't, Cynthia. It's good of you to be concerned. I'll tell him you asked for him. Give my regards to your father. I can't stay. Yes, I, I certainly will, Mrs. Walcott. They're going to take Samson's van here, and you hit them there. Do you really think it's going to be as big a snip as that? I think so, Jimmy. I hope so. Yeah, well, if it is, you'd want to recommend that snout of yours for an OBE. A bloody knighthood. Mind you, if it isn't, there'll be a lot of sore bollocks. <laughs> well, I hope my own little party works out half as well as yours. has landed. Son. We'll mop up here. See you back in the knee. Bang him up, Del. Okay, see you later, see Charlie. Call the fire brigade, George. It was a bit cute, I'll say it myself. Copped him in the middle of the doings, no damage to any punters, and got most of the money back. Yeah. That fire was a bit of a bad break, huh? Is the, the flipper of yours all right? Fortune's a war, Jimmy. Trust a far-sighted sod like the bot to always carry extra petrol. <laughs> Inspector! Ah, oh, do I have to turn my collar around, or is this for the record? No, no, just a little brain picking. Brain peeking. Okay, fire away. Do you know anything out of the way of the club near the junction, the Thousand Islands? Out of the way? Out of the way. In aid of what? Well, in aid of the fact that the thought of the place makes a friend of mine go queasy, and I know him to have a very strong stomach. Anybody I'd know? Yes, Dennis and George. 
<laughs> I'm surprised you're still on speaking terms. Uh, Dennis and I go a long way back. We uh, play a sort of complicated game, you know, but we both want the same people to win in the end. Well, the Thousand Islands Club stinks, always did stink, and the smell is getting worse. Comes from letting blacks in, eh? Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Place is owned by a fellow named Nick Vikos. But forget that. One raid at a time. Listen to me now. There was a little bastard I had up the other day who thought he could get away with what he liked on the strength of knowing a man named Montagnes. Ever heard of him? Just a name to me. Well, I don't expect you to know every black villain personally. This one runs a drum over on the Albion Road. Private house, you know, but uh, lots of diversions available if you know him. Shabin. Yeah. Now, how the hell did that expression get from Ireland to the West Indies? Slave traders. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't wonder. Anyway, I think this place is being used as a drug depot. So you and I are going to break up the party. That's fine with me. Say? Say John is out. Oh, come on, for God's sake, this is not an afternoon trip to South End, you know. Probably spent half hour deciding which tight to wear. Can't take villains in just any old gear. <laughs> Look, Ray, less of the comedy, just drive, will you? for England, Tom. Shut up. Hey, you! All right, lads, get them downstairs. Can I let them walk, or do you want them lower floor? Just get them out. All right, lads, you go on ahead. Hold on. Now, listen. Let's get one thing clear in that stubborn head of yours. Never again, not one more time, will you mouth off to me in front of villains. Villains. They'd want to be the way your guys went to work on them tonight. Uh, well, for Jesus' sake, will you wake up? The man we copped here tonight, he's one of the biggest drug dealers in this end of the world. Biggest, my ass. If you had everything that you got tonight together, you wouldn't have five ounces of hash and a gram of coke. All right, all right. Maybe we didn't time the thing properly. But the stuff is lying around, and it's got to be coming from somewhere. A bloody house party, and those guys hit it like a mafia convention. Oh, now, don't give me that sympathetic lark. I've seen your record. I know all about the wrecked eye and the soft sentence and a few other things as well. Oh, my God, no. When one out of every five or six policemen is black, well, then things might be different. But until then, this is how it is, and you know that. If it's too much for your sensibilities, well, then go and look for Gordon Berry's job. He's fond of helping the downtrodden.
Of course, it's completely up to you, but I wouldn't really emphasize the bisexual and the mantras. I mean, it's very hard to get flats at the moment. Can I help you? I hope so. <laughs> Look, I'm looking for Miss Marin. My name is Walcott. Uh, I'll see. Oh, Melinda. Oh, my God. What a small world. Hello. You know, I was just wondering if I should waste another five hours trying to call you. <laughs> Busy then? Very. I'm writing a short account of that little number you pulled last night up at Carlos Montanez's. What I need to know. You caught on to that pretty sharpish? Look, man, do I have to show you my What the Papers Say award? Okay, if you're a pro, you can help me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, maybe. By the way, uh, last night, how did you get to know about that? <laughs> By the way, give me a break, please. Okay. I know Carlos is lawyer. He uh, does a lot of community work, you know, demonstrators, union people like that. He seemed to think that last night was a pretty messy scene. Would you care to give the police point of view on this? If you want the police view, then you'd have to talk to a mad Irishman called Gilligan. Oh, come on, life's too short, please. Okay, okay. You said I could help you, right? How? Okay. Gilligan thought he was hitting a main dealer last night. I think he was misinformed. Now, that doesn't mean to say that uh, there isn't a main dealer to be hit. No way. The only thing you get from me is name, rank, and serial number. That doesn't mean anything to me, Melinda. This is not 1967, you know. If you can cover for people like that, then uh, you're just another parasite as far as I'm concerned. OK. I don't really see it that way, but I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, seems to be a lot of confusion on the scene. You know, known sources are drying up, the new ones are turning up in unlikely places. And the most disturbing thing to me is there's a lot of cheap heroin going around. Hello? Hi, are you interested in this or what? Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, it's a lot of cheap heroin going around, and there's obviously, to me, obviously organized money behind it. Come on, what? What's the problem Look, now? I can read this in the papers. We both have work to do, and it's not being done here. OK. Can we just, can we meet somewhere on, meet on some neutral ground or something? Uh, I'm going to a club called A Thousand Islands later tonight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I know it. OK. 10, 10.30? Oh, gee, you know, I was going to wash my hair, you know? But I think I can make it. OK. You may go in now. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Rowe. It's all right. My half day closing. You're looking well, Mr. Aziz. Not letting the uh, London nightlife get to you, I can see. Well, the diplomatic life has many pressures. Many pressures. Well, Mr. Rowe, since you have had your tender for the consignment accepted, perhaps we can carry on to the next stage? That is satisfactory, Mr. Rowe. Subject to audit. Oh, you won't have any problem about that. Now, when can I expect delivery, Mr. Aziz? I have my customers to consider as well. Well, the goods are in transit at this moment, Mr. Rowe. They should be in your hands within the next 10 days. That's right, Mr. Aziz. 
And delivery will be uh... as per previous arrangement. Spliff together, eh? Okay. You take a lot for granted. Well, their big boys get bored to drink, so naturally I thought ours would be into our thing. Brother, you're not telling me that you're straight. <laughs> Too straight for this bitch. Of course, I've never had any really good offers. Cheers. You? Got to see Nick. Well, Nick's not here tonight. Yeah, well, I'll come in and have a drink then. Go on, lads, on you go. Watch it. Who are you clocking, Sambo? <laughs>
three large creme de menthe frappes, four double brandies, uh, a pina colada, a pint of Nigerian naga, and uh, have one yourself, gunga din. Listen, man, you work the street straight, and you'll be poor and alone. He's impossible, ah! Shall I maybe not a cry? It's just impossible, Speak, brother. Right. Bit of business downstairs. Cool man. <laughs> I'm on duty. Oh, I forgot. Uh, let's see. Drink on duty? Yes. Drugs on duty? No. What about sex and rock and roll? All right, night, 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 and no messing about, yeah? This is what I think it is. Double murder.
What about Cecil, man? Cecil got a lot of moderation, man. Cecil cool. He handled himself. Believe me, brother. Cecil, all right. Well, Jimmy, you know something? No guns. Well, they saved their shooters for us. What's it all about? A product of the multiracial Britain, huh? You know that Rowe family, they've been around for years. Yeah, haulage contractors. But they've also dabbled in extortion, money lending, fencing, and all that usual old pony, you know? Drugs? Well, I can't say anything for definite. You see, some of those old family firms tend to shy away from drugs. But nothing would surprise me. Of course, you know, it's a good business, uh, if uh, you can spread it. But the uh, market is shrinking, and they're having competition for the new ones. I wonder who's handling the black side of things. Yeah, you tell me that. Well, I have a few ideas, but uh, things don't seem to fit together very well. I have to go further into it. Look, what about Rao? Uh, After last night? No, we have nothing on him. Oh, the best we can charge him with is assault and causing an affray, and he'll get out of that one very easily. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. Well, look, anyway, tomorrow's another day, huh? Why don't you go and freshen up a bit, and maybe I could uh, buy you that drink? Drink? Yeah, come on, Winston. Not a mark on the handsome hero's face, then? No. Thanks for asking, though. How about you? You seem to be putting yourself about a bit, Constable. You flash bastard. Something on your mind? Yeah, now you come to mention it, there is. Me and most of the lads don't think a lot about having you around. We wouldn't think a lot about it even if you didn't pick glory. And even if you didn't hang around with white girls. But I care about what you think is point not not one percent of sweet fuck all. Understand? You see, I've been hearing this tune ever since I became a cop, and you don't even play it very well. Now, are you gonna get the hell out of my way, constable, or do you want your face wreck as well as your career? <laughs> I can see the vein. Uh, I haven't seen you this long time. Yeah. You're keeping well. Fine, yeah. Pint? Not oh, great. Hi, great. Brendan. If you want to warn you, let it hunt you. I didn't think they'd let fellas like you into a classy joint like this. Uh, the poor are never turned away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Bobby O'Keefe. Finest traditional fiddler this side of the county, Clare. Bobby Winston Walcott works with uh, me. How are you? One of the Ross Carmel wool cards, huh? <laughs> County Brixton. <laughs> <laughs> Some nice fiddling. Oh, lovely. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> See you. Gilligan here. Oh, yeah. Just hold on a minute, please. It's for you. It's a woman. Yep. Ah, yes, I was wondering a bit how you got on. Yes, things did get a bit hectic at the end. Yeah, I know the layout. Well, kiddo, I mean, you handed me a really good scoop. Thanks. Yeah. Do you think that Terry Rowe was mixed up in that business of yours in any way? Terry Rowe? 
the lad himself. Yeah. I don't think so, Jimmy. Oh, listen, Winston, part of the reason I called is my editor wanted me to invite you to a do on Sunday afternoon at his house. Right, Jeremy Garden. No, no, I promise, no more interviews, strictly social. Yeah. Okay, yes, I can make that. What's the address? Here, got a visit to tell. What cheer, Terry? Well, well, well. Deputy Dog and all. Done well, young man. Done well. I thought you'd like it. I did, I did. Especially where you only recovered £40,000. What's with the end? Just a bit of window dressing, son. I'm looking forward to a lot of no bother, Inspector. You? You're a road haulier. You keep your tax paid and your MOT up to date and you hear nothing from me. Mind, I hear you've got a bit of bother on at the moment. What bother would that be? We've got our own tame coon down the shop now. We know what goes on. Yeah. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to talk to the bastards. I'm not greedy. I can negotiate. But if things don't work out, I may have to call on you. Leave me out, Terry. I said I'd look after your interests a bit. I didn't sell wet nurse yet. That's how it is, son. <laughs> <laughs>